This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them. So for those of you who watched this uh, series I did about the Westboro Baptist Church, some observations. As you know, uh, you know about seven of them, it looks like, I came to protest uh, at Westside in Colorado Springs. They went to two different churches that were within about a block of each other and held their signs. If you watched the whole series, you probably couldn't help but notice that the Westboros themselves, despite their eyebrow-raising, uh, God-hates-fags message, and I think it's a godhatesfags.com URL, if I recall, actually seem to uh, behave better than the counter-protesters. In fact, the nastiest thing I saw them do was the holding of the signs. Oh, and one of them, uh, one of them got onto the property of a nearby gas station. You know, he was standing and holding his sign about, you know, he was probably five feet closer, I don't know, probably about 10 feet closer to the gas station than the sidewalk was. So he was probably not on the right of way anymore. He did uh, leave when the gas station attendant told him to. And none of them, you know, were, were uh, trying to uh, uh, stop anyone else from filming or anything like that during this demonstration, as best I could tell. And yet, I saw three or four incidents where counter-protesters were trying to uh, control the media in some way. Two of them confronted me for uh, interviewing West Bros. One of them confronted a mainstream reporter for doing that. And one of them uh, technically assaulted both a mainstream reporter, not a mainstream reporter, a, a Westboro. He, he, assaulted, he assaulted a Westboro and uh, me, technically, uh, by intentionally and repeatedly touching them slash me with a flag. Uh, them first, then me, when I asked them questions about it. None of this stuff constitutes war crimes, uh, but it's good to focus. They say you should focus on what you see, not what you hear. Uh, what you see with your eyes, not what you see with your television. Now there's a, a history to this stuff, a backdrop, a context that has to be considered. First of all, when you think that just 50 years ago you could be thrown in jail uh, for having a same-sex affair, at least in Britain. I don't, remember if, I don't remember exactly how it worked in the United States. But of course, the shoe was on the other foot, and when homophobes had the majority... They did terrible things to gay folks. And the Westboro Baptist Church, which uh, originates from Kansas, and which uh, I, you know, I saw all the news reports back in the day when they were first getting started. Our TV station sent many reporters to do m coverage of many of their events. And we did not have a particularly biased set of TV reporters. They came back pretty shocked at the kinds of things that the Westboro Baptist Church was uh, doing at demonstrations. It wasn't so much that I don't remember them committing an assault uh, at any demonstrations or anything like that. But what, what would happen is their founder, Fred Phelps, would just walk up to anyone that he thought might be gay. You know, and he would just figure out the most vile things he could say to them. Like one guy, he walked up to him, and he, and he looked at the guy that was standing next to him, and he said, Is this your butt buddy? And back in those days, the Westboros were not really so, they were not so outnumbered, right? They would show up somewhere, and, and it would, if I recall correctly, they would often have kind of the same numbers of people as the counter-demonstrators, mainly just because the counter-demonstration uh, regimen maybe hadn't been fully spun up yet. It hadn't become, you know, a thing to go and um, make fun of the Westboros at the, one of their demonstrations. And, it, uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that you, when you have two demonstrations and one of them is really big, and one of them is small, it's actually unlikely that you're going to see the small group of demonstrators be really abusive toward the large group. It's just really not practical. And there will be more opportunities, if you've got seven times as many people, there will be more opportunities for your group to have some guy in it who's uh, misbehaving. So it kind of would surprise me if you had ever, ever for some reason had you know a Westboro Baptist group with an equivalent sized group of counter demonstrators. I think this would have played out differently, and you would have seen abuse, equal amounts of abusive behavior by either side. 
equal probably not worse on the part of the Westboros that's the important thing to keep in mind is that Westboro counter demonstrators people tend to assume that they are uh, somehow better than the Westboros because they're more tolerant of gay folks and that is something about them which is better than the Westboros but in practice it feels like we're dealing with two different group, two different sets of bad intolerant people perhaps not every last one of them uh, on the uh, on the counter protester side the uh, gay rights side i mean i mean surely you could go to a Westboro Baptist Church demonstration to counter demonstrate and be a perfectly decent nice individual many of the demonstrators the counter demonstrators uh, would qualify at this demonstration that I attended but the overall vibe of the crowd was one of intolerance and menace uh, intolerance toward the uh, unspeakable act of doing an interview with a bad guy and in some cases intolerance of, of being questioned themselves I did see, though, considering this is sort of an Antifa, uh, partially an Antifa event, their behavior was actually quite a bit better than what I saw uh, two years ago at a, an Antifa demonstration that I went to at Colorado, uh, UC, UCCS in Colorado Springs, uh, the University of Colorado at Colorado Springs. Now, there I approached probably, you know, I don't remember how many, I probably approached five Antifas to, to talk to them or film them or something like that. And I had, I had, I think, either two or three incidents where people were trying to block my camera. So no one did that to me at this set of demonstrations. And they, and they answered my questions. In fact, almost everyone I talked to, I think, answered my questions, except that one guy with the, with the, uh, the mask, the, uh, <laughs> the serial killer-looking mask. Anyway, it's important at events like these to just be asking yourself, you know, that one question: who, who you know, who, who's committing an act of aggression? Uh, who's trying to stop people from doing, you know, just filming? Use those two things as, as sort of your litmus tests, and maybe it's useful to get a sense of, you know, who is uh, who is spewing insults and who's not. How many of uh, each group? And, and just by being there with a camera documenting that you can sort of make it unnecessary i hope for the police to be there you know i can hope that by being there maybe somebody behaved a little bit better cuz they were nervous about being you know videotaped committing an assault or something like that you know protect the free speech and the freedom of defense and you know basic human rights of all the people who are in front of your camera if you can no matter how nasty you might think they are uh, you know, there's a there's a place in the world for doing that sort of thing. In fact, there's still, I think, a huge demand for it. I really wish that there were more people doing it. I wouldn't feel like I had competition. I would feel like, oh, finally the reinforcements have arrived. Anyway, so large groups tend to be more associated with more instances of bad behavior, and this is one of the reasons why I, I like to operate alone. And if I'm going to demonstrate, I almost... I'm okay with demonstrating alone instead of having a group. It's almost not worth the trouble, you know, to make, to set a specific time and invite a bunch of people, and then maybe someone shows up who just makes the rest of you look like jerk bags. There's another phenomenon that's sort of highlighted, I think, by this demonstration, and that is the almost inherently endearing nature of being a minority uh, in terms of uh, the position that you're taking even if your position is uh, even even if your position is worse than the Westboro Baptist Church just being a minority being the only person in your town that holds that position right or the only person in the area or a, a part of a tiny minority it does take a, t a degree of courage right like if you're the only Stalinist in Colorado Springs, <laughs> okay, you know, I'll hear you out. Uh, I you got to respect you for being different and, uh, you know, the, going against the grain. But how, how the F-bomb do you defend that position? It's the same way with the Westboros. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. You're just crazy. But on the other hand, at least you've got the guts to subject yourself to ridicule which you may deserve. 
Now, you may have noticed if you listen to the interviews I actually did with the Westboros, they seem to be divided, evenly divided, between folks who wanted to use the government to stop gay people and folks who uh, didn't. Now, right there, that makes them less offensive to me than something like, like if, they, if there was somebody that were running around and they had a URL that was, uh, you know, deportillegalimmigrants.io or something like that. That would actually be more offensive to me because that would be like all of the, the whole purpose of that thing would be taxpayer expense, right? Get the taxpayers deputized to send money to the government to deport the illegals. I mean, that was just in the, the inherent message of, of such a group would be like that. And at least this Westboro group, they're not automatically saying that I should be forced to pay for their activities or their, their favored plans. And yet, you know, the country is pretty tolerant of this uh, anti-immigrant crowd that just thinks it's okay to come to your house, take your money, and uh, send it to, de you know, to create de detention camps. I guess they don't really come to your house for that, but they, they might if you don't pay. And again, I guess the reason that Americans are relatively tolerant of the anti-immigrant crowd is because there's so many of them, right? There are, there, I don't know if they're quite a plural, plurality of American public opinion, but they are a, a large part of it. So anyway, if you're out there holding a sign on a street corner advocating taxpayer expense to get rid of illegal immigrants and deport them from the country, you have even less of my respect than the Westboro Baptist Church. Yeah, put that in your fence and smoke it. Now, again, you also may have already noticed from the videos that the police did not come up to the demonstration, right? They they kept their distance. The, they were like two blocks away. I only saw uh, one police car, and I didn't see any police men for sure. Uh, some people in plain clothes that might have been. But they weren't close to the demonstration, I don't think. If they were in it, they were completely embedded, right? And undercover, and I didn't notice them. <laughs> Uh, but while we know we should welcome uh, restrained police response generally, uh, I do have to wonder sometimes if the police were standing aside more for the purpose of kind of letting the demonstrators just have their way with these awful unpopular people than out of any concern over their own uh, need to be restrained or to show restraint. Sometimes that is a police technique for seeing minority opinions suppressed it's just to kind of let the majority have their way with them i don't know maybe i'm being overly cynical i was pleasantly surprised to see the low-key reaction anyway hats off to the uh, leftists for not actually hurting anyone at this demonstration uh, this particular part of the, you know this particular location kudos to the antifas for actually engaging with me now instead of just putting their hands in front of my camera and uh, uh, respect for the Westboros for actually uh, doing the same, answering my questions, not trying to control me, keeping their calm uh, in the face of ridicule. I don't like all these people on either side, but they had a chance to prove that they can avoid descending into significant violence uh, while the police are not around. They had a chance to do that, to prove it, and they proved it. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.lrn.fm. That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.